Hey everybody! So I'm taking a little bit of a break from my Element series to pursue uh, yet another hobby of mine, which is metalworking. So that's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time and uh, finally getting into it, which is really, really cool. Uh, so I have a project in mind that's a little bit down the road, but in order to do that, I want to make an alloy of metals that looks like gold, or as close to gold as, as possible without being actual gold. So hence this is sort of my uh, quest for gold here. So originally I didn't plan on filming a lot of this because it's all very experimental uh, at this stage. Uh, but I shared it with some people and they thought it was uh, interesting enough that I should actually make it into a full video and so I did. So the first part of this video where I talk about brasses is not quite up to my usual standards because I kind of recorded some parts and didn't record other parts and uh, you know the narration wasn't very good but uh, we have some footage and I'll be able to show you that stuff. And then at the very end uh, is when I decided to actually start recording and I've got some, some better footage of a second experiment, which is really, really cool. So stick around to the end and uh, you won't be disappointed. We got 300 grams of copper wire that we'll be loading into the furnace. Unfortunately, the furnace lid is a bit warped now, so I have to weigh it down to keep it closed. I'm also going to try adding a little bit of borax into the crucible here to see if that helps act as a flux. I've got several different zinc ingots that I poured a little bit earlier and I weighed all of them and wrote the weights in grams on each of them. And what I'm going to do is after the copper is molten, I'm going to add these one at a time. So we'll go in order of mass from highest to lowest. So I'll add one ingot, uh, let it alloy, and then pour out a sample of the brass, uh, put it back in the furnace, uh, add another ingot a little bit later pour out that brass and so forth and we'll get samples of each of these different ratios and see which one comes closest to what I'm looking for. The copper is now totally molten and I'm going to add my first piece of zinc right now. That's the 20 gram ingot. And I've got my N95 respirator on so we should be good to go. Next up is the 17.4 gram piece. Zinc number three, the 17.2 gram.
little better. Alright, I'm running out of propane, so I'm just going to pour the rest of this out. So here they are. They all look a bit different, uh, but to really tell, uh, I cleaned up the bottom of each one of these. So you can see the difference in the color. And all that was, I just took a Dremel and I wire brushed the bottoms. So you can see that's uh, one, two, and three. They're labeled, if you can see that. And the color is uh, pretty different between the, the three of them. I mean, it's very coppery on the first one and it gets slightly more yellow uh, as you go along. Uh, in addition to these, I didn't film it, but I took the disc of solidified material from the last melt and remelted it after I got some more propane. And I made two more ingots following the exact same procedure, uh, adding more zinc each time. And here they are uh, for a total of five ingots. Uh, so these last two are quite yellow, which is really nice. So it's a really cool uh, progression. You know, you start from copper when there's very little zinc, and then the more and more zinc you add, the more yellow it gets, which is really, really neat. Uh, now the percentages for each of these, I calculated, it's actually really difficult to calculate this because you have to account for the mass that you start with, and then, you know, when you pour a sample, you remove that mass, so you have to subtract that out. Um, pour another sample, remove that mass, and, then, and so forth. And then every time you add one of these, you know, you, you boil off some of the zinc. So I tried to account for that by, you know, I know the starting masses, and then I can weigh the final mass of everything that I produced, and then, you know, find out kind of the discrepancy is how much zinc evaporated. Uh, you don't know exactly when all of that zinc evaporated, but I can kind of guess based on the footage. Anyways, after all that math, uh, I think these are close to the right percentages. You can see I got quite a lot of zinc in this last one, 72%. And actually it was, it was kind of cool because when I, I, I regret not filming it because when I poured that final ingot, because there was so much zinc in there, it was actually on fire as I was pouring it. <laughs> so that's when I decided to stop adding zinc. So the next phase in my quest for gold is gonna take a different approach. We're gonna move away from brass and into bronze. Now, normal bronze is an alloy of copper and tin. I think it's typically 12% tin. And it's uh, usually a more brownish color than regular brass is. Uh, this type of bronze, however, is a bit different. Instead of tin, we're gonna be using aluminum. And so hence, it's called aluminum bronze. And this alloy has a fantastic color to it. So this aluminum bronze is about 10% aluminum. So I have a small brick here that we weigh in at 18.53 grams. And so to make that 10% of the final uh, mass of this alloy, we need to add about this much copper. And this copper is leftovers from pre-melted stuff. Uh, there's some wire and then other bits and pieces that I had as well. So 166.82 is very, very close to the 90% uh, copper, 10% aluminum ratio that we want. Now I did a test of this previously and I'll give you a little preview of what the alloy looks like. So that is a 10% aluminum bronze, a fantastic gold color. I'm extremely excited about this alloy and I wanna make some more of it. So this little brick was my initial test and that was made using very pure ingredients. So I used copper wire and aluminum wire and both of those have to be pretty highly pure metals in order to conduct electricity. So they're good sources for purity. Uh, this time around when I'm making the new stuff uh, is gonna be somewhat of a test because this is a bit lower purity ingredients. So this aluminum ingot is from soda cans so a bit less, it's still fairly pure aluminum as far as alloys go, but less pure than wire. 
and uh, these bits and pieces. There is some wire, but some of it was melted from copper pipes, which doesn't have to be as pure as wire either. So we're going to melt these together and uh, see if they produce as nice of a color as the very pure ingredients did. So here we're going to follow the same procedure that we did for the brasses, where I melted the highest melting point thing first, and then I added the lower melting point things in later. I don't know that that's entirely required for this type of bronze, but I'm going to do it anyway. that my usual dross scraper is too big for this tiny crucible. So we're gonna have to improvise a little bit. But the good news is it came right off the plinth. So I think that worked. The dross is nice and powdery, which is good. Now let's pour. solidified. Maybe I should have done that at a little bit higher temperature. It's all right. But we're going to put this back in the furnace uh, so it cools down slowly. Well, at first glance, it looks a lot redder than the other one, but let's uh, quench it and see if that maybe improves it. So here's the finished product all cooled down and man does that look good. It has a beautiful, beautiful gold color and uh, the, the ingot mold I use is actually pretty good because this is really super smooth too. So I'm very pleased with that. So for comparison, uh, here's the, the other gold ingot that I had a minute ago and it's definitely different. And I'm not sure if that's due to purity or maybe tarnishing. Supposedly this alloy is very tarnish resistant, uh, but maybe it does tarnish over time. I don't know. We'll just have to see how these two uh, turn out, I guess. But right now they look fantastic. 
here's the the bottom side of them so show that they're nice and smooth this one's kind of nasty just because it had uh, I used some mold release spray and that kind of burns off and you know you get some carbon but that would be easy to clean up so for a comparison here's a piece of actual gold and uh, that looks pretty darn close to these so that's awesome. I think I've definitely found my gold simulant. And then finally for completeness, here's my brass ingots that I produced earlier. So you can see the full spectrum of colors that I made. It's difficult to get a good picture of these different colors just because it's so reflective, but uh, hopefully this will give you some idea of what they look like. But it, this has been awesome. I have had a lot of fun doing all of this. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. So it's been a couple of weeks since I made these, and in the meantime, they've tarnished a bit. So I want to try to use a wire brush to maybe shine them up again, and so we can see the degree of tarnishing that's happened. I already tried that on uh, this one. This is my uh, original aluminum bronze sample, the real small one. So uh, it does make some difference, so we'll try it on all of these and see how they compare. That shines up pretty nice. So let's try that on the other ones and see the difference. So here they all are, half polished. They clean up pretty nicely. Uh, clearly they definitely tarnish, uh, especially the brasses, a lot. And with the brasses, the higher the zinc, the more they seem to tarnish, which makes sense because zinc is much more active and it's gonna tarnish more than copper will. You can actually see that on number five here. Uh, on the top of number five, we get a lot of uh, white zinc oxide that formed. Um, so that one has definitely tarnished quite a bit.